I want to show you how to go from this to this with gouache using only three colors, primary yellow, primary magenta, and primary cyan plus white. And if you're a beginner with gouache, I promise you can do this and I'll be showing you every step of the way. I'm starting by mixing up a watery mix of the cyan and white to block in the sky. My process with gouache is to layer and I love to create depth and vibrancy and I found that layering is the best way to do this. So I just spread the watery mixture of blue on the page and then I put in a touch of white to create that gradient effect. This doesn't have to look perfect so don't stress about making the blue and white blend perfectly. It's okay for there to be streaks of paint. We're going to cover this up pretty quickly. Then I do a watery mix of the light green. For this, I just mix a touch of cyan with the yellow. And then I do a watery mix of darker green for the foreground, which is mixing in a bit more cyan with the yellow. You'll notice this dries super quickly as it's very thin paint. So once dry, I'm going to start with the part that is furthest back, which is the sky. And I begin by mixing a more intense blue. So cyan with a touch of white and a tiny touch of magenta as well. And the white allows it to be a bit more opaque and the consistency is not thick, but it's not as watery as that first layer. I like to call this a melted butter consistency. And while still wet, I'm going to start dabbing on some lighter blue, so cyan mixed with more white, to create clouds. And I'm being guided by my reference photo, but don't feel the need to stick to it perfectly. The reference is just a guide. And the paint is merging with the wet paint on the page and spreading a bit, which is what I want to make those clouds look kind of fluffy. And I keep layering on the wet paint, going lighter by adding more white and dabbing my brush up and down. I go back and forth adding lighter paint to make the page wet and then dabbing on more white and letting it spread. This is called wet on wet technique which is used a lot in watercolour and I love using this technique for clouds and as you can see the sky that's further back loses some of that blue pigment which helps us create this depth so it kind of gets lighter as you go down the page. You can also see as I go further down the page or further back into the distance, the dabs are getting smaller, which helps create the illusion of clouds that are further back and smaller. Now gouache will colour shift when it dries so you can see the white paint has gone darker, it's lost a bit of that vibrancy so I go in again with a bit thicker paint and start dabbing on more white onto the clouds, focusing on the edges where the clouds are really light as the sun pokes through. To really add dimension to my clouds, I need to add some darker parts, so I mix some cyan and magenta and white, and you only need a touch of magenta to create kind of this purplish hue. And I also add a touch of yellow to pull it towards a bit more of a greyish darker colour. And I focus this on the bottom part of the clouds to begin to add dimension to them. I really love painting landscapes, they are my comfort painting, they're the first subject matter I started painting when I reconnected with paints again and I'm in a situation right now where I'm so inspired and have so many ideas for where I want my art to go but I don't really have the capacity to fully jump into them because I'm so busy at the moment so when I do have a spare chance I'm gravitating more towards comfort painting which is painting within my comfort zone and not necessarily pushing the needle with making anything extraordinary but just relaxing and having fun with paint and landscapes always help me do that. Bye. 
So as the paint dries, I see that I want to amp up my white again to really increase the contrast. So I begin to dab on white using the reference photo to guide where it should go. And my paint is thicker here as I want it to stay bright. And I will have to go back in and retouch this white again, but I'm getting closer to achieving that brightness that I want. So as I was mentioning, I do have some really exciting art projects that I want to work on and part of my goal is to build up certain skills that will help me in these projects. So I've been taking some Skillshare classes to do this. Right now I'm taking a class with Tom Froze on composition for illustrators, expressing ideas with story, structure and style. And I'm trying to learn more about composition and illustration. I want to take my illustrations outside of my sketchbooks and into more final pieces to tell stories or have a message. Which is where I want my art to go. I've been playing with scanning my art and composing these pieces and to do these collages I've been using Photoshop and even though I have experience with Photoshop I've learned it for one specific thing so I'm also exploring some Skillshare learning paths which are curated classes to help you build certain skills. This one on Photoshop called Photoshop Basics Learn the Ropes and Build Your Skills is perfect because it had a collaging with Photoshop class in it and I really want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video and I also want to let you know that the first 500 people to click on my link below will get one month free of Skillshare. Let me know if you find any great classes that you would recommend I take. Okay, so I've continued to build the white of the clouds and I'm adding tiny details now to really highlight those far away clouds with really small dabs. And to finish off, I go back in with some of that purplish mix, a little bit more purple this time, and I dab that on in certain areas. If you get close up you can see that this is a mishmash of different colours but if you kind of stay with that principle of white on top and then the darker colour on the bottom you can kind of see the clouds forming and I just like the overall effect that this has but again it doesn't have to be perfect so don't worry too much if they're not perfect looking clouds you're just going for an overall effect. Now I do come back to the clouds later on but for now I'm going to leave them to dry because I'm happy with the overall tones I've achieved and I want to add final details when the paint is fully dry. For the background skyline that is full of trees I need to mix a dark and desaturated green so I'm mixing all three colours and to keep it more on the green side instead of going into a brown I'm not adding much magenta for this. This is mainly cyan and yellow with some magenta to desaturate it and I'm just dabbing my brush up and down to create the tree line. Now onto the midground and I'm reviving my green and making it lighter by adding yellow and white and then I'm adding some strokes of this yellowish green onto that midground. And then I need to mix a darker green, so I'm adding cyan to that mix and making it a bit darker because the foreground is more saturated and it's closer to us so it appears darker in the photo. And as you can see, I'm changing the direction of my brush because this is closer to us so there's a lot more detail. So the grass blades are going to be more apparent which is why I'm going up and down instead of smoothing it horizontally like I did with the midground.
and I keep adding cyan to darken the green with a touch of magenta to get this kind of hue and I begin to go back and forth adding these up and down strokes larger in the foreground and then much smaller in the background to give that illusion of depth of the grass getting further away from us. Here I'm beginning to add some of that lighter yellow that I mixed or yellowish green and this is starting to give some contrast to the darker blades so you begin to see a lot more depth and texture come through in the foreground. In the foreground you can see a lot more shadows and definition of the grass blades so I'm mixing up an even darker green, kind of like a dark blue, I'm mixing in more cyan and magenta into my green and I don't use black as shadows because I really like the look of dark blue as my shadows in gouache. I go back to that skyline because I think it needs to be a touch darker. It's all about adjusting as you go along with gouache as it dries and you see how it colour shifts. And then I mix yellow with white to create this light yellow that I brush onto the mid-ground. And you may not be able to pick this up through the video but this is quite dry paint, less watery and you can see some of that dry bristle effect which I love for texture. I'm also using that same yellow to pick out some of the highlights in the foreground too, some of those single grass blades and I feel like this gives a really cool effect. Then I continue to add some deeper shadows to the foreground with some of that dark bluish green which is mainly cyan with a touch of yellow and magenta. Now as you can see in this close up, this is a mishmash of colours, don't stress too much if your colour mixing isn't perfect, I can't stress that enough. It's about creating those light and dark contrasts as I said, so if your dark green is more blue or your light yellow is more green, it will still work I promise you. I'm going back into the clouds now, they have fully dried and I want to pick out those really bright white highlights to amp up that contrast. And here I'm going in with a damp brush, not a wet brush, with not really much any paint on it at all actually and kind of just blending out some of those harsher lines that I see and that's the beauty with gouache, it reactivates with water so you can do some blending on the page. Um, definitely don't use a wet brush though, you want it to be slightly damp and don't put too much pressure, it's just about blending out some of the harsh lines between the light and the darker paint. And I actually use this technique a lot in my gouache painting, um, I like to go in with a damp brush and kind of smooth out any harsh lines that I see, that's why I love gouache so much, I find it so forgiving. 
Okay, now on to the fun part, which is adding those tiny details, which brings everything together, which is these poppies. So I mix some magenta with a touch of yellow and I dab them on, making them go smaller for the ones that are in the background and larger for the ones closest to us. And these are just little blobs, nothing too defined. And as you can see, it looks pretty flat with just one color. So the trick here is to add some contrast by mixing a lighter colour. So I add some white into my orangey red paint to create this lighter orange. And I add small blobs of that onto my flowers, still allowing some of that darker orange to poke through. And you won't necessarily be able to see this clearly in the reference photo. This is kind of an interpretation of these flowers, um, but it just allows the flowers to seem more 3D. And so if you're ever doing flowers on a field, try not to just add blobs of the colour, but mix up a darker and a lighter mix of that same colour and add li little highlights and lowlights and you'll see that they really do come to life. Then I mix some dark brown for the middle of the flower and this is done mixing almost equal parts of the yellow, cyan and magenta. And this is just added onto the centre of the flower of the poppy. And then I mix an even lighter orange, adding more white to create some more highlights on those flowers and giving them more dimension. And using some of that dark brown, I'm also adding small dabs of paint between the grass blades to create even more shadow definition between the grass. And this isn't really in the reference photo, but I also wanted to add some white flowers, or I guess there's a little bit of white flowers, but I wanted to add some more and add a bit of interest mixed in with some blue flowers too. Um, it's your piece, so you can add whatever colors you like. And here is how it came out. And I hope that you enjoyed following along. Please do show me if you do end up following along this tutorial I would love to see what you create and if you want to see also a tutorial of the sunflowers let me know I have quite a few videos lined up um, I have a lot of footage that I've taken which is great but I need to edit it so I will be back with more videos let me know what you'd like to see and I'll see you in my next video bye mm -hmm.